Hey everybody, John Newberry here and welcome to an April 2020 edition of your fly fishing forecast for the Roaring Fork Valley in Colorado. My name is John Newberry and this is my website, Newberry Angling Arts, where I tie a lot of flies and talk to you or give you a lot of information about my experiences fly fishing. And welcome to this, what I hope is the very first edition of a flycast video log on the Roaring Fork Valley and what you can expect to be happening in the rivers nearby through the season. So for the month of April 2020, you can expect to start seeing, well actually, we've just wrapped up the Goliath Midge Hatch, which provided a lot of exceptional fishing and of course, the very big first meal that fish are getting coming off of their winter slumber. So if you're still throwing some Zika midges, like the 420 Zikas shown here, then you're probably gonna still catch a lot of fish because the fish are still tuned into that shape. However, the big uh, attraction happening now is the Betis nymphs and the Betis hatch. So I use my Betis glam rockers here to imitate the, uh, the swimming Betis while I'm fishing outside of the hatch itself. You'll notice that if you've ever seen or watched back channels in the rivers, the betas swim up and down and around quite a bit for a number of days before they actually hatch when conditions are just right. So betas nymphs are always swimming around this time of year. They're very uh, much in demand. So I have the glam rockers here and that is by far the most productive fly I've ever used. Yesterday I was out and caught, I, we we're talking fish per hour, a lot of fish. So the glam rocker right there in the Betis color, size 18, two and a half millimeter bead. That is gonna be your number one fly for most of the month of April. Outside of the Betis hatch, you of course will always have right now um, small small stone flies getting larger and in April and as the month progresses and up leading up into the caddis hatch we have the squala hatch and you'll see that um, occasionally the observant angler will stumble across a squala um, case on a rock or something this time of year the knuckle dragger golden stone was actually developed for that hatch and to be an anchor fly that I used to pair up with the Betis Glam Rocker when I need to get that one-two combo for depth. The next big attraction, well let's talk about these hot beads because hot beads are hot and the reason why these hot beads are hot right now is the fish are spawning. Yesterday I released several beautiful hens that were post spawn. And so a, uh, fish have the innate egg eating response. Fish have an innate egg eating response. Okay. Fish have an innate egg re fish have an innate egg eating response. I think it's so they can't help themselves. They see an egg drifting down, they're gonna eat it. Either that's somebody else's genetics, they gotta make sure it doesn't get passed on, which I think in the case of fish as a group organism is not likely the case. There seems to be a mutual survival mechanism going on in that. So then my other theory, and it's based on my observations of being an aquarist for my lifetime in spawning fish, is that an egg that's adrift could fungus and foul any other potential red downstream. So if one bad egg floats down, it hits another red, and it can contaminate the entire red. That is my theory on why fish love to eat eggs. And anything with a hot bead right now during rainbow trout spawning season is, of course, going to be a huge trigger. So coming up in April, we're going to have the Mother's Day caddis hatch. And you see how he left those two together right there? So if we think about the shape of this Brachycentris caddis, which is a cased caddis, it's got that kind of tannish brown, dirty, rocky, uh, conical shape. And now look at the shape of those hair's ear, hot beaded hair's ears that I have up there. That fly right there, my friends, is a egg eating cased caddis. Now don't think I'm anthropomorphizing fish because they're not thinking to themselves, hey, an egg eating 
cased caddis is drifting by that's wow that's a buffet no we just have innate we have innate responses and so as fly tires and anglers we, we kind of want to be attracted to a fly that makes sense to us and we might be able to say hey this is representing this so in my in my experience to yours this sexy waltz worm or sexy betty here is really effective this time of year because we have eggs number two it looks like a cased caddis so with that being said there's why i choose these hot beaded flies this time of year now the next hatch up from that of course is the brachycentris americanus and the brachycentris occidentalis we have both species they overlap they start in the colorado river as soon as the river hits around 45 degrees and you'll start to see the swarms working their way up stream you know, 10 to 15 miles per day for a period of the month it's hard to say when they'll start keep an eye on the water temperatures but when you start seeing all the bankside alders getting about their leaves get to be about that big and they're, they're as bright green as that caddis that's when you're going to start seeing that hatch occurring in my experience most of the fish i catch are always subsurface there's so many caddis hatching so much so fast the fish have a hard time keying in on any one particular thing so i found um, these, uh, what I have these spring caddis here, any kind of bright green and black, especially movement in the water. And I say movement, jig your flies, animate them, lift them and drop them. And as you're, as you're fishing, just bob them around, um, let them swing at the end of the drift, let your flies swing all the way to the end before you make your next cast. So fish these guys before the hatch even happens, you'll start picking fish up. So what else do I have for you? Today, uh, we talked about the Brachycentris, why I like hot beaded jigs. Uh, Stoneflies are always always around, but you're going to get the squalas coming up. So get some of these uh, knuckle draggers in your box, size 10, 4 millimeter bead. And uh, see, those guys are always going to happen. You can't go wrong with that fly any given day at a time. So that, my friends, is your forecast what's going to be happening betas through to the mid end of month and brachycentris or the mother's day caddis through the later part of the month into the early part of next month i will update you if i see anything else out there that might be of interest or improve your success on the river thank you for tuning in this month's episode of your Flycast Forecast with John Newberry on Newberry Hingling Arts. If you're still with me, let's go fishing. Cheers.